You're listening to Tim Bolkley's 5-Minute Bible. Would a rose smell as sweet? What's in a name? I'm teaching Biblical Narrative this year. I love teaching Biblical Narrative. Getting people to spot the almost unbelievable skill that's used in telling Biblical stories is just such fun. And the stories themselves are so vivid and so full of life. One of the things I draw attention to quite regularly is that naming is important. How does the text refer to people and who's doing the the referring, the naming? Because both who does the naming and how the naming is done can be highly significant of either particular characters' points of view or of the narrator's point of view or of something that the teller of the story wants you to get. And the other thing I quite regularly say, which is going to be related as you'll see, is that change is always important. When something's repeated but changed, the change is significant most of the time, almost always. So it was with real interest that I read an essay on Genesis 22, 1 to 18, the horrible story of the near sacrifice of Isaac, the binding of Isaac. The writer of the essay drew attention like commentators have, especially I think Wenham, to the way in which the naming of God in this passage begins with Elohim but ends with Yahweh, Hashem, the name of God. But it's more sophisticated than that because interestingly the story doesn't begin with God, Elohim, it begins with the God or gods Ha Elohim with the definite article in Hebrew. It's a form we find in a number of times in the Bible and it's by no means always certain that the presence of the definite article means anything. But it's not a very common form. The common form is just simply Elohim God or gods. So Genesis 22 begins after these things the God or the gods tested Abraham. He said to him, Abraham, and he said, Here I am. He said, Take your son, your only son Isaac, and so the horrible story starts. And again and again in verse 3 and verse 9, the God progresses this dreadful narrative. And in verse 9, when they came to the place that the God had shown him, Abraham built an altar there and laid the wood in order. He bound his son Isaac, laid him on the altar on top of the wood. Then Abraham reached out his hand and took the knife to kill his son. Notice there, in passing, how the storytelling slows down at this point. It's like a slow-mo scene in a film. It heightens the tension. But the angel of the Lord, Hashem, the name of God, Yahweh called to him from heaven. This is the point at which the name of the covenant God of Israel is introduced into the story. And the angel says, Do not lay your hand on the boy or do anything to him, for I know that you fear God. And now for the first time in this story, it is just God, Elohim, not Ha Elohim, the God or the gods. And then from that point on, in this story at least, It's always God's name that's used. So the change is not quite as clear-cut as some commentators might like, but it's even more interesting because we have first Ha Elohim, the God or the gods. Then, when the name of Israel's gods introduced, we then get the more usual form Elohim, God, on the lips of the angel not on the lips of the narrator. The narrator has been referring consistently to the divine being as Ha Elohim. So it's neither as simple as one part of the story being written by one writer and another part being written by another writer and the two spliced together, nor is it so simple as this story using Ha Elohim where other stories use Elohim. The narrator in this story uses Ha Elohim, the god or the gods until the point at which the narrator of the story introduces God's name YHWH Yahweh and at that point a character in the story, the angel of the Lord 
uses the word Elohim, God. Something interesting and strange is going on here. And it's by no means simple. Maybe more about this in another podcast. But for now, you've got stuff to think about. And that's why I do these podcasts. See you next time. God bless.